Let's consider one gate question related to pointers. Consider the following declaration of two-dimensional array in C. Here is a two-dimensional array A which contains 100 rows and 100 columns and each element of this array is of type character, right? Assuming that the main memory is byte addressable, which means that each address corresponds to one byte of memory location and that the array is stored starting from the memory address 0. That means base address is 0. The address of A4050 we have to identify. Is it 4040, 4050, 5040 or 5050? This question has been asked in gate 2002 for 2 marks. Please pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay. Let's try to find out the solution of this question. We know that A is the array which contains 100 rows and 100 columns, right? This 100 indicates 100 one-dimensional arrays. And each of these array contains 100 elements, right? And all these elements are of character type. I can pictorially represent this in this way. Index always starts from 0. Therefore, the first one-dimensional array has an index 0 and the last one dimensional array has an index 99. Similarly, the column index starts from 0 and it ends at 99. 0 to 99 means total 100 columns and 0 to 99 here means total 100 rows. So it's a two dimensional array. I want to find out the address of A4050. That means I want the address of the 40th row and 50th column. In order to find the address of the 40th row and 50th column, we need this formula. That is, ampersand of AIJ, that is address of AIJ is equal to base address BA plus I minus LB1 into NC plus J minus LB2 into C. BA indicates the base address of the whole two-dimensional array. NC indicates the number of columns. C indicates the size of the data type of elements stored in the array and that too in bytes. Here in this case, it is not given to us. And LB1 is the lower bound of the rows and UB1 is the upper bound of the rows. Similarly, LB2 is the lower bound of the columns and UB is the upper bound of the columns. In our example, base address is 0 as starting address is 0 in the question. Number of columns are 100. We can see over here the total number of columns we have are 100. C is the size of character in bytes. As it is not given in the question what is the size of character in bytes, therefore my assumption is that it is one byte long. This is the universal assumption. If it is not given in the question that what is the size of the data type, then take the universal assumption. Character size is usually one byte. Okay. As index starts from zero, therefore the lower bound of the row will be zero and upper bound will be 99. Similarly, the lower bound of the column will be zero and upper bound will be 99. Now I can replace these values in this formula and what I got is 4000 plus 50 which is equal to 4050. Therefore the address of A4050 is 4050. Hence the option B is the correct option. You might ask me this question that why that formula works? How that formula is helping us to calculate the address of A4050? Let's see why the formula works. Let's say I have an array which contains 5 rows and 5 columns. I have given this example to better understand why the formula works. I have total 5 rows and 5 columns. Okay. Now, I want to find out the address of A22. That is, the address of this location. A22. Okay. Now, how do I find this address? I am assuming that A2 is equal to B. So, I can write this ampersand A22 as ampersand B2. And I know that b2 can be written as star b plus 2 and finally I can replace this b by a2 and a2 can be written as star a plus 2. So finally ampersand of a22 is equal to ampersand star star a plus 2 plus 2, right? Now let's see what this star a plus 2 gives us. a is the pointer to the first one dimensional array. Recall that name of the array in case of two dimensional array is always the pointer to the first one dimensional array. Here this is the first one dimensional array. So A is the pointer to this whole one dimensional array. If I add two to it, then pointer will simply move two positions in forward direction. That is, it moves to this one dimensional array. Now in order to reach to this one dimensional array, I basically have to pass through all these elements. There are total five elements in the first row and 5 elements in the second row. 
So it is clear that I have to pass through these two rows, but each row contains 5, 5 elements. It means that 2 must be multiplied by 5, which gives us 10. This means that I am passing total 10 elements, right? We know that each element is 4 bytes long because the data type is int. My assumption is that integer will take 4 bytes of memory location. Therefore, each element takes 4 bytes of memory location. Finally, we have to pass through those bytes, right? So 10 must also be multiplied by 4. So finally, a plus 2 is equivalent to 1000 plus 2 into 5 into 4. I'm assuming that the base address of this array is 1000 or I can say that the address of the first one dimensional array is 1000 and I will add 2 into 5 into 4 to it which is equivalent to 1000 plus 40 which is finally equivalent to 1040, right? And I have to dereference it. Right now, I'm at this location. That means my pointer is pointing to this whole one dimensional array. If I dereference it, I'll go inside, which means that I got the address of the first element of this one dimensional array, that is the third one dimensional array. So star 1040 gives me 1040 only, but this 1040 is different from this 1040. This indicates the address of the first element of this whole one dimensional array. So I can say that star a plus 2 is equal to 1040. Now the next operation is to add 2 to 1040. Right now, I am inside this one dimensional array, which means that pointer is pointing to this first element. I want to move to this location. That's why I added 2 to it. But in order to move to this location, I have to pass through these two elements. And each element takes 4 bytes of memory location. Therefore, in order to pass through these two memory locations, I have to multiply 2 by 4, which gives me 8. Total, I am passing 8 bytes in order to reach to this location. Therefore, 1040 plus 2 is equivalent to 1040 plus 2 into 4, which gives us 1048. So I can replace this star 1040 plus 2 by star 1048, right? Finally, I know that ampersand and star cancels each other. Therefore, the final address so obtained is 1048, which is the address of A22. That is third row and third column. The address of this location is 1048. Isn't that simple? Now let's combine all these steps together to understand how the formula works. After combining, I got this expression. Star a plus 2 can be replaced by star 1000 plus 2 into 5 into 4. That's what we have obtained, right? And finally, I can write this 2 as 2 into 4. So this whole expression can be replaced by this expression. What we need is these elements only. 1000 plus 2 into 5 into 4 plus 2 into 4 because it finally gives us the address which we wanted. So I can write this statement once again, 1000 plus 2 into 5 into 4 plus 2 into 4. I can take 4 common from these two. It gives me 1000 plus 2 into 5 plus 2 into 4. This indicates the base address. My assumption of base address was 1000. Then I multiply 2 by 5. Here I know this 2 is the index i only. In order to reach to that third one dimensional array, I have to pass through two one dimensional arrays. This two comes from this two only and I have to multiply it by five. That is how many elements does each one dimensional array contains. Two indicates I have to pass through two one dimensional arrays and each one dimensional array contains five elements, right? Then finally, this two indicates that after entering that one dimensional array, how many elements I have to pass through in order to reach to my final destination, right? This 2 comes from this 2 only. This is the destination we want to reach. And we can multiply this whole thing by 4, which indicates the size of integer. Assumption is that size of integer is 4 bytes if it is not given in the question. Let's see what was the original formula. Original formula is ampersand of aij is equal to ba plus i minus lb1 into nc plus j minus lb2 into c. What is the obtained formula? It is ba plus i into nc plus j into c. We have missed this LB1 and LB2 because we know that index always starts from 0. In some questions, of course, index may not start from 0. It may be the case that index of row starts from 3 and maybe the index of column starts from 4. Let's say that index starts from 1 instead of 0 and I want to reach to this one dimensional array, then definitely the index of this one dimensional array is 3. I have not mentioned the index 1 over here and 3 over here. You just have to imagine. This is the original two dimensional array that I have mentioned in the example. 
So you have to imagine that the index of this one dimensional array is one and of this one dimensional array is three. Okay. I am representing the number of rows that I have to pass through by i minus lb1 as i is equal to three. If I simply write three, it means that I have to pass through three one dimensional arrays, but basically I want to pass through two one dimensional arrays, right? Therefore, I have to subtract three from one. Okay. That is why lb1 has to be incorporated. And similarly, this is applied for j also. j must be subtracted from lb2 for the number of columns. In our example, lb1 and lb2 are zero. That is why we have obtained this formula, ba plus i into nc plus j into c.